In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 6, as we look at the model prayer the Lord has given us and as we've looked at it over these past few Thursday nights, we have come to the point there of verse number 12. We have there in verse number 12, the Bible says, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Talking about the subject of forgiveness. And we looked at the first of three questions that come to mind when it comes to this passage of Scripture and this verse. And the quest, first question we looked at last week is, why should I forgive? And we looked at four answers that were there, that were given to us, of why we should be a forgiving people. And and the first answer that we have there is that forgiveness allows God to forgive my sins. The postscript there of verses of verses fourteen and fifteen. There, it's the only postscript there of the Lord's prayer. Jesus says, "For if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you." But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we see that when we are, we are to forgive because forgiveness allows God to be able to forgive us. Also, we see that when we forgive others it shows our faith in God and his word God said that vengeance is mine I will repay saith the Lord therefore I don't have to as a believer in Christ I don't have to even the books I don't have to get even with those who hurt me God will settle things And if I go about to try to even the books myself, then I'm saying that I don't believe in God and his promises. I don't believe in God and his word. I don't take him at his word. So, there was that. The third, the third one, my memory, I tell you, I'm becoming like the president. <laughs> yes, that would be a good idea. Uh, <laughs> Pray for your pastor. And forgiving others is proof that we are sincerely sorry for our own sins. As well as we look at that. Forgiveness closes the other door on other sins in our life. We don't carry around that sin of bitterness or resentment or envy or jealousy. We don't open the door to those sins if we forgive others. And we find that forgiveness makes us more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, helps us to be more conformed to the image of Christ. Christ was very forgiving. All throughout his public ministry, he was forgiving. You remember in the Gospel of John, chapter 8, the woman that was brought there by the Pharisees that was caught in adultery, in the very act of adultery. And Christ put them in their place. He that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone. And they all left, the oldest to the youngest, and she was there all by herself. And Christ asked, well, where are, where are your accusers? She said, they're all gone. And Jesus said, well, I forgive you. Go and sin no more. When he was nailed to the cross, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. 
When we forgive, we become more like our Savior. We become more conformed to the image of God's Son, taking on the characteristics of our Savior by being forgiving. The second question tonight we're going to look at is, is how does God forgive? We have looked at why we should forgive, and we've answered that question. Now we're going to look at how does God forgive us? And first we see that God forgives us completely. We are completely forgiven by God. The Bible gives us the promise that is familiar, to I hope, to everyone here tonight in the the book of 1 John 1 and verse 9. The Bible tells us there, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When God forgives us of our sins, how many sins does God forgive us of? All our sins are forgiven. Each and every single one is forgiven by our God. We also find the we also find there in the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament the prophet Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse number 34 Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse number 34 And they, shall, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sin no more. We find and we see not only does God forgive us of all of our sin, God forgets all of our sin. After we confess our sin to God, he will never say to us, remember that sin you committed, that bad thing you did. God's not going to bring that back to our remembrance because God has taken our sins and dropped them into his sea of forgetfulness, the prophet Isaiah says, to remember them against us no more. Our record, the record of of our sins, if you will, has been expunged by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's nothing better than that. A clean slate. But it's our job and responsibility to keep the slate clean. Thus, when sin comes into our life, we need to confess it. And only then can God forgive us if we confess. (coughs) God never brings up our sin again. And that's how it should be. And if we forgive as God does, we do not bring up that sin or hurt that someone has hurt us with anymore if we're going to be forgiving. Part of forgiving is forgetting. And that's the problem we humans have. We say, well, I forgive you, but you know, 30 years ago, (laughs) I remember... When you were over at my house and we were six years old and you pulled my hair until an entire clump came out in your hand. That's not true forgiveness. True forgiveness is not keeping record. True forgiveness is being able to forget what was done 
and the hurt to us. I'm telling you, it's easier said than done. And that I understand. But with the Lord's help and by the Lord's grace, it can be done. Because if God can do it, he can allow us to do it as well. And if we forgive as God does, we do not bring up the sin or hurt anymore. We don't tell other people about it. So they know what victims we are and how someone else has hurt us. But you know who will bring up that forgiven sin? Satan always brings up that forgiven sin. He has a closet full of them. All kinds of skeletons. And he brings them right out of the closet. Every opportunity he gets. Satan will always try to get his foot in the door to keep your bitterness burning and to keep your bitterness burning by reminding you of those who have hurt you. And then he can lead you into all kinds of other sins if he can get that foothold in that bitterness and get that bitterness sparked up again in our heart. If we forgive as God forgives us, however, we will forgive completely and we will never bring it up again. One of the greatest joys of the Christian life is being able to forgive those who hurt us and never bring it up again. Forgiveness gives us a foretaste of what heaven is like. And one of those most Wonderful things about heaven is found in the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 65, and verse number 17. Isaiah chapter 65, and verse number 17. It echoes what Christ says in Revelation chapter 21. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. How glorious that will be. That the Lord will make all things new including our thoughts. One of the horrors of hell is that no one forgets anything. It's part of the torment. Father Abraham told the rich man there in hell, Son, remember. Satan's sermon in hell for all eternity. Remember. Remember when this happened to you. Remember when you rejected the gospel. Remember when this person hurt you. Remember when this happened. All part of the torment of hell. Author C.S. Lewis in his book, The Great Divorce, describes hell as a place where no one forgets anything but remembers every cruel exchange of words and every hurt. I believe that to be true. If you want to live in a hell on earth, refuse to forgive. And you will. Because you'll carry that hurt with you wherever you go. One thing that makes heaven a fantastic place is that God forgives completely. He forgives and he forgets. God also forgives freely. Not only does God forgive completely, but God forgives freely. Now, it doesn't seem fair to be guilty of sin 
as we are, and then be freely forgiven of our sins as we as believers in Christ are. It seems like we should have to do something to pay for the bad things that we have done. And that's why so many people get involved with religion that's based on working for their salvation. Doing something to pay penitence for their debt of their sin. But the Bible says God's already done that. And there's nothing that we can do. In the, in the New Testament book of Romans, in Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, There in verse number 4. In verse number 3, the Apostle Paul, moved by the Holy Spirit of God, asks this question. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. The Bible tells us that when we put our faith in Christ, we are justified by faith. Romans 5 and verse 1. God is true. And we as nature are all liars. But when we put our faith and trust in Christ as our Savior, we can overcome when we are judged by faith. Standing righteous before the righteous God. Justified by faith in that position. It's a great position to be in. See, our forgiveness is free, but it's not cheap. Our forgiveness costs something. You know, I, you've heard the expression, there's no such thing as a free lunch, and there's a lot of truth in that. And it's the same way we, with our forget, the forgiveness of our sins and the salvation of our soul. Our forgiveness is free, but it's not cheap. It costs God, His only begotten Son. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that not only could we be forgiven but also so that we could forgive those who hurt us and not be guilty of the sins of bitterness and resentment and gossip and etc. If I forgive as God does, I must forgive completely and I must forgive freely. The last question that we'll have to say for next time I don't have enough time. Not enough time. But we will get to that question next week. And that final question is, how can I forgive those who have hurt me? And that's an important question. And we will look at next time. I appreciate your time and attention tonight.